Good morning, AJ. How's everything going outside? You're out uh, out west, right? It, it is beautiful this morning. It feels great, and it just it's one of my favorite topics. You yes. know, the spring comes on, and mm -hmm. you open up your windows, and you just in the morning, you just hear the birds chirping. So I figured we'd talk about birding and just kind of, you know, we've talked about it in the wintertime and going through and helping birds in the winter, but never really through spring. And really, this kind of dovetails into also when we start talking about pollinators and really just creating a habitat, um, just like a natural habitat in your backyard that really just helps everybody. Um, it's great for us. It's great for birds, for animals, for um, pollinating insects, just everything in general. So we'll just touch on a few basic things for um, for birding. So this is just, I mean, obviously they're very cute, but they're very um, ingenious, are the squirrels. And so looking at um, different types of feeders, you wanna get something that's gonna help protect you against the squirrels, at least as much as you can. And then when you're planning on a place to put them, try to keep them where a squirrel can't just reach and grab the feeder because they'll do that. They'll just reach and grab it and they'll just jump right in. Um, so as you're looking at feeders, take a look at where you're going to position it. Um, and then also take into consideration what's below it because there's a few different things that you can do. So there's bird seed that has little or no waste. Now these cost a little bit more, but the waste that actually falls out of the feeder and goes on the ground is minimal compared to uh, like a bird seed that's got shells in it um, that have like sunflower shells and other seeds with shells you know those shells will actually fall to the ground as the birds go through pick through and that'll go down and has a tendency to be a little bit dirtier so it's something that you just want to kind of keep in mind you know and then looking at what to you know attract i mean obviously safflower is great for cardinals you've got finch for a lot of your really small songbirds um, there's finch mix but you know for doves for bigger birds something like this with like you know nuts and cashews and just really nice beautiful mixes a lot of them have fruit and then if you want to get in and talk about you know, attracting hummingbirds and orioles. These are a little bit different. So we've got some flowers actually. So the petunias and actually this kufia, see where like the hummingbird beak can just go right inside and the same thing with the petunias. Things that have a cone shape, hummingbirds really love, or you can just do the hummingbird feeder and then you just put the sweet nectar, they come in mixes. They're either ready to use or you can mix your own. Just put the nectar inside and they'll come through and eat off of here. And then orioles, which is a beautiful songbird. They they just sound incredible. So you can actually put, they eat like a jelly. So you can put a jelly down at the bottom and the Oriole Fetos will actually have a bowl. And then you could put orange slices or fruit slices up here and they'll actually come and eat the oranges, which is just really, it's, it's cool, it's beautiful. It's just really neat to see. But also part of this is, you know, building the habitat and having plant material, you know, having plants around there where they can nest, where you can, you know, collect materials for them to build nests. Um, for protection and safety against, you know, predators. So looking at just different stuff, you know, not only, I mean, they smell beautiful, like this fragrant viburnum is just absolutely gorgeous. It's deer resistant, but the flowers right now, they smell so, so fragrant. And even these rhododendron, um, you wanna have some evergreens, you wanna have a nice mix of evergreens and have a nice mix of uh, deciduous, just as, you know, plants go through their natural cycle you go through so some beautiful arborvitae, um, some ilex or holly, but you know, these rhododendron, this black hat is gorgeous. It just explodes with color right now. Um, blueberries, actually, we were actually just talking about this this morning. You know, they make a beautiful hedge. So not only are they blueberries and they produce fruit that's delicious, but they form a beautiful hedge as you go through. I actually did this at home and I've got, you know, six or eight of them planted a rose. Those fell out. In the fall, they turn like a really bright, fiery red. And then obviously the blueberries, which if you want the blueberries for yourself, you're gonna to have to net them. If you want them for the birds, you can leave them unnetted and then try to get in there before the birds do and just see who wins. So AJ, um, if you have a, like your bird feeder from like the winter time, should you take that and just dump it out and start all over again? Or is it something that if you have the, you know, if you don't have the resources to, uh, you know, to switch, you know, the type of seed and stuff, can you just keep your bird feeder going all, all spring long? And, and will that still work somewhat in bringing, you know, the, uh, the birds from spring in versus the ones, you know, from a few months back? Yeah, absolutely, Scott. So the bird feeder from the wintertime is great. The one thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you clean them. So it's really important, you know, when it gets low, next time it gets low, especially if you haven't done it in a couple months, you want to do it about every month or so. Just go through, wash it, just soap and water. They've got brushes that can come in and clean the feeders. 
you know, no matter what kind of feeder you have, you want to make sure that you keep it clean. Um, for the same reasons, you don't, you don't want bacteria, you don't want fungus building up in there. That's a really important aspect of doing that. But the feeder from wintertime is great. You know, just keep it going. Just make sure that you're cleaning that, you know, monthly and sure. you'll be, you know, in really, really good shape. AJ, always a pleasure. Good stuff. We've never covered this before, I don't think. I know we've covered birds in the winter, but we haven't covered this in the spring. So uh, it was a great topic. No, and, it's really uh, cool. Yeah, really good stuff. And looking forward to getting into the garden here pretty soon. Absolutely. We'll be planting up soon. So okay. it'll be here before we know it. You got it, AJ. Have a great day. Kenny Crumb.